Kendrick Lamar dissed J. Cole and Drake. This is news that you can currently read everywhere in the hip hop media. And that's just a crazy thing. It's a really intense situation. Yeah, man, let's get to the diss. I'm sure you've all heard that Future and Metro Boomin released their new album tonight. The thing is, Metro Boomin and Drake are not getting along at all right now. I made a little video about it. They're supposedly beefing in the background too. And something similar is also rumored about Future. Apparently, Future isn't really happy that Drake collaborated with 21 Savage instead of him. But that's a rumor that was never confirmed, so that's just reaching. But what's crazy now is that exactly on a song by Metro Boomin and Future, Kendrick is featured, and he disses Drake and actually also J. Cole. So that's crazy. And yeah, bro, the diss was really insane, man. Let's start with the first diss. Here he says, sneak diss in first person shooter. FPS, which stands for first person shooter, was the song by J. Cole and Drake. And he's talking about sneak dissing here. You'll understand why he says sneak dissing because Drake has done it quite often, just like Kendrick did to Drake as well. It's a thing that has been going on throughout both their careers. But here Kendrick is clearly referring to it, especially with this diss. Plus, this diss isn't over yet because directly in the next line, Kendrick says he hopes they come with three switches. So he hopes they come armed. Switches are attachments that you can put on your semi-automatic weapon to make it fully automatic. And the number three, well, that's a number that will keep appearing in his disses. I'm not going to address every three, but this three clearly refers to this top three, which is constantly mentioned in the media. So from Kendrick, Drake, and J. Cole. At the end, he also clearly disses this top three again. Anyway, personally, I think it's a cool element that he kept mentioning these three and stuck with it throughout his part. In another line, he directly goes against Drake. Here he says, your best work is light pack. That means your best work can't be taken seriously. Prince outlive Michael Jackson. That's an incredibly cool comparison because Drake usually compares himself to Michael Jackson. Many people also see Kendrick as the Prince. You have to understand, Prince and Michael Jackson were always compared to each other. Michael Jackson always had the bigger numbers. And in the eyes of many listeners, Prince was the more talented one. And with this wordplay, Kendrick clearly compares himself to Prince, which means Kendrick Lamar wants to outlive Drake. For all your dogs getting buried. So, For All the Dogs was Drake's last album. It went pretty viral and, bro, that's a clear diss. You can tell me whatever you want. And buried means to bury, so it's definitely disrespectful. Then came the next line, which was, that's okay with all these nines. He go and see Pet Cemetery. So, that's a kill. That's a kill with all these nines. So here, he's referring to nine millimeters, which is a pistol or a firearm. He will see the Pet Cemetery. So here again, he's alluding to him being a dog, from what I understand here. But this wordplay with this K and this 9 is really sick. So K9, those are the police dogs in America. Bro, Kendrick is a lyrical genius. You can say whatever you want. And right at the end of his part, he says the following. Motherfuck the big three. It's just big me. So fuck the top three. Basically, it's just me. That's a clear diss against Jake Hall and against Drake. Jake Hall is probably thinking this now. Fuck up. I look at the computer. The computer say, Floyd say, fuck T.I., fuck Nelly, fuck 50. I'm like, what do you say fuck me but, for? Yeah, honestly, I'll tell you, this diss didn't just come out of nowhere. It wasn't unexpected. This has really been brewing for the past 10 years. That eventually this whole thing would escalate. I'm really curious how Drake will respond, how J. Cole will respond. The internet is going crazy anyway. So, Big Sean has now also dropped a diss against Kendrick out of nowhere. So bro, I have no idea what's going on right now. I think where I lack most as an artist is consistency. I just haven't had the energy to compete with enemies or y'all so-called bigger... Then Metro Boomin tweeted, Once you pick a side, stay there. So translated, if you choose a side, stick to it. Hashtag, we don't trust you. So that's the name of Metro Boomin and Future's album. I'm not sure who that's directed at now. 
People think it's meant for 21 Savage, who is very close to Metro Boomin, but also to Drake. In my opinion, it's reaching now. But bro, this is wild, man. Hip-hop needed this. This is crazy. But hey, let's talk about the history of Drake and Kendrick Lamar because this beef hasn't just started yesterday. Earlier, Drake and Kendrick were good with each other and Drake was somewhat big before Kendrick. Well, what does somewhat big mean? He was already really big back then, but you couldn't compare it to today. Still, Drake really pushed Kendrick back then. The two of them also trusted each other immensely. Drake was the first person who got to hear Section 80 who wasn't part of Kendrick's team. Then Drake even featured Kendrick on Take Care. Ultimately, Drake even took K-Dot on tour, also with ASAP Rocky. But bro, that was already a massive push. You have to imagine, because those were the early days of Kendrick's career. An incredibly tight and intense new generation seemed to be forming, because back then you could already see that Kendrick was something special. The same goes for Drake, because Drake was already a superstar back then. I promise you, each and every one of you are responsible for the four individuals on this stage, and we will rep for y'all to the day they lay us flat on our motherfucking back, nigga. What's up? Like I said, this is my brother ASAP Rocky. This is my brother Kendrick Lamar. This is my brother Chase and Cash. We all ask you just one favor. Y'all keep working on being the beautiful people that you are, and we're gonna keep giving you this music that you love so much. Then both were also heard on the song Problems by ASAP Rocky. That was a crazy song, but that was their last song together. Unfortunately, because then there was a break. In 2013, both took over everything personally. Drake became the superstar we know today. And Kendrick became one of the craziest rappers worldwide. By now, he's also a legend, just like Drake. However, Kendrick won the MTV Hottest MC Award this year, and Drake didn't. And apparently, Drake was also one of the few people who didn't personally congratulate Kendrick. At the BT Awards, Kendrick cleaned up again. He won the Best Male Hip Hop Artist over Drake. So, both were nominated, but Kendrick won. Drake even congratulated him for the success on Twitter. So everything seemed fine behind the scenes. What's crazy is, Drake was nominated a total of 13 times that night, and Kendrick 14 times. And here, the community started talking. They discussed endlessly who's the greater one, who's the king of the new generation. And this also rubbed off on the two. Because in August 2013, Kendrick made a legendary move, which is still intense and incomparable today. Because he had a feature part on the Big Sean song Control. And here Kendrick just dissed every great rapper there was at that time. So, Meek Mill, ASAP Rocky, J. Cole, and Drake. I feel like this diss wasn't meant to be disrespectful towards the individuals. It was more of a competitive thing. He just wanted to make it clear that he's number one. He's the craziest rapper. And with that attitude, you just have to go in. You have to think of yourself as the craziest rapper. If you have the ambition of a Kendrick Lamar, just like with a Drake, you also have to have that ambition. And everyone understood that. Meek Mill reacted cool to it. Asa P. Rocky reacted cool to it. But Drake didn't. He didn't like that at all. That's why Drake then incorporated a few sneak disses into his next album. And that's how the beef between the two slowly escalated. And that's why Kendrick didn't take long to wait for a response. And so, the bet cipher came out, in which Kendrick dissed Drake again. Here he said that he's very sensitive, and yes, he was actually right here, because Drake shouldn't have reacted like that. Yeah, and nothing been the same since they dropped control and tucked the sense of the rapper back in his pajama clothes. Ha ha, jokes on you, high five. And of course, Drake didn't just let that slide. Because on the song with Future called Shit, he again took shots at Kendrick. So, a very, very wild beef. There were no name drops back then. They were all sneak disses. I guess you all thought, oh, it's just a Azai Talks video. But it's still crazy. I never realized that the two were beefing. And that's how it continued over the years. There were sneak disses again and again. But it must be said that Drake actually wanted peace. 
I, I always keep my ear out for, for, for the hardest shit. I have a lot of respect. I have a lot of respect for, you know, the other two guys that I'm constantly, you know, up against, which is like Cole and Kendrick. Mm, Three-headed um, monster. Yeah, yeah. So I have a lot of respect for those guys because they also continue to, you know, stay true to what we started, started with mm. um, and finding new ways to do it. That's how it seems to me, at least when I look at the whole thing now. Because Drake really gave Kendrick props in interviews, shouted him out on Twitter, and posted old photos of the two of them. And Kendrick absolutely wasn't feeling it. He wanted to make it clear that he's number one and doesn't like Drake. With Drake, there was always this back and forth. He sneak dissed Kendrick, then gave him a shout out, then sneak dissed him again. It was a really weird situation, so it's not a real beef. I think it's more of a background issue that has been brought a little into the public eye. But Drake also announced why the control disc fucked him up so much. Because this control disc came out when Drake was in his album phase. And that was just not good timing, according to his statement. I can understand that, yeah. Over the years, Kendrick and Drake grew bigger and became the faces of the new hip-hop generation. And that's why the comparisons became more intense. Albums released close to each other were compared. The impact of both was compared. Everything they did was compared. Drake even went so far as to have a feature with The Game. And The Game comes from Los Angeles, the same city as Kendrick. And on this track, Drake just dissed Kendrick. The music video was even shot in Kendrick Lamar's hood in Compton. And you can't tell me that it wasn't intentional. Then there was this beef between Meek Mill and Drake at some point where Meek Mill had revealed that Drake uses ghostwriters. That was, of course, a vulnerability that Kendrick Lamar also exploited. Because in a Rolling Stone interview, he said that a good musician can use a ghostwriter, but the best rapper in the world just can't. And Drake has always titled himself as number one. So, that's also a clear diss against Drake. So, this beef didn't just start yesterday, it started in 2013, and it has continued over the years. On Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, the last Kendrick Lamar album, Kendrick Lamar even said, Hey, I don't understand why Ye made up with Drake. And yeah, I feel like it's more of a one-sided beef, where Drake is more on the defensive. So Drake is responsible for a lot of beefs, but I think it's a really cool and sportsmanlike beef because it's simply about who is the number one of this generation, who is the GOAT, and... Kendrick Lamar is just so determined and has so much self-confidence that he says, hey, I'll fuck up anyone who says they're number one because I'm the number one and there's no way around me. It's a shame because we were denied some nice features. I really believe that Drake would be open to reconciliation. He even showed up as a spectator at a K-Dot concert in Toronto. Of course, you can interpret that in both directions. You can say, hey, that was a provocation from Drakey or it was just respect because Drake vibes with K-Dot's music. Whatever the case, the whole thing reached its climax tonight. Now you're probably wondering, why was J. Cole also dissed? What did J. Cole do? Especially because J. Cole and Kendrick were really close. Did you know that J. Cole even produced the song High Power? I didn't know that before the research, for example. So that's intense. In the hip hop community, there was always this desire for a collaboration between Kendrick and J. Cole like a proper collab album, and that, even though J. Cole was also dissed in the control diss. Apparently, J. Cole didn't think that was cool either. Nevertheless, the two were still cool with each other after that diss. There's a really crazy story because in this control diss, Kendrick says something like, hey, I'm the king of New York. Apparently, P. Diddy didn't like that at all, and Diddy wanted to go P. Diddy style on Kendrick Lamar at a party he wanted to pour a drink on him. J. Cole was also present, and he got into it with P. Diddy. Yeah, J. Cole got into it with P. Diddy. J. Cole even confirmed it himself. A really messed up story, man. J. Cole and Kendrick, man. That was the dream team everyone wanted. There were some features from both of them, and they were nice too. But in 2014, J. Cole released Forest Hill Drive, and that's when he started titling himself as number one. And as you all know, Kendrick doesn't vibe with that. Still, the two were good after that. Unfortunately, the last picture of Kendrick and J. Cole was taken in 2017. Since then, there hasn't been a public meeting between them. In 2018, J. Cole even publicly stated that the collab album would never come out. Incredibly sad. 
And that was the last update. So in first person shooter, J. Cole also mentioned that the top three are Aubrey, so Drake, J. Cole and Kendrick. But I found a YouTube video that actually explains that there were sneak disses from J. Cole towards Kendrick and vice versa. But I think that's a bit reaching. So I don't want to go into that, but it seemed like something was up. Also, Drake and J. Cole are currently presenting themselves as the two biggest. And rightfully so. I mean, we're talking about J. Cole and Drake here. The only people you can mention in the same breath are Ye and Kendrick. And since the two have recorded some songs together during their USA tours, which have gone crazy viral, I can imagine that Kendrick thought, hey, I have to speak up now, I have to address all these sneak dieses, and I have to make it clear again that I'm number one. And for that reason, it wasn't a surprise to me that this diss came out. Yeah, folks, I honestly think it's cool that Kendrick did that. I'm really curious how Drake and J. Cole will respond. Hip-hop needed something like this. We need a little action, especially on this scale. This really gives off Nas, Jay-Z vibes. Man, that's intense. I'm heaped for the coming weeks because I'm sure Drake will respond. So, folks, let me know what you think about this beef. What do you think of the diss? Let me know in the comments. Leave a rating. See you. Until next time. Ciao.